Hi and welcome back. Uh, this is part four. Uh, in the process of uh, just playing with the seats a little bit for height adjustment and uh, getting a good look at what I think might be best for my sole purposes of using the canoe. I think I'm just about there. I've got the seats clamped up and uh, just playing with different height levels and taking a look and uh, trying to gauge what the stability will be of the canoe and uh, obviously the lower the seats the more stability so uh, I think I'm just gonna have about uh, one inch spacers and this is what came off uh, the, the uh, Eclipse canoe and I tried refinishing it and and I just don't think it's gonna have uh, the appearance to match uh, the new wood so uh, I have taken some new uh, ash lumber and I've ripped it down to size and it's got to go on the router station I got to do some round overs but um, I'm going to determine my final height of my seats I'm going to cut the spacers drill them on the drill press and then uh, finally attach the seats permanently really appreciate all of you that have uh, supported the channel and have commented on parts one two and three I didn't expect it to last four parts at all. It's just that, uh, you know, sourcing materials is a little difficult these days. So um, I appreciate you hanging in there with me. Really appreciate when you leave a comment. And if you know anybody else that likes this content as well, uh, make sure that the, you, let, you let them know. I have some projects coming up in the future. Uh, it's going to be a restoration, a wood canvas canoe restoration that I'm going to be helping somebody else out with and uh, I enjoy the work and that canoe will also be down in the shop in a little bit. Thanks for watching. making good progress some of the previous clips that you've seen you've seen me install the gunnels replace the decks carrying handles the seats are webbed not completely screwed into the gunnels yet still have that remaining um, so ultimately I'm, I'm approaching the finish line here and what I'm about to do is actually I took uh, the template off one of my other canoes for the carrying yoke, which I like. It, it's actually on the Wabnaki Cedar Strip canoe that I built. And uh, I just traced that out, templated it, cut that out down here in the shop, and I'm about to cut it out with a scroll saw, jigsaw, and then I'm gonna just run it through my little uh, modified router table here and uh, just do a round on each side, sand it down, install it and then what actually what i'm waiting for at that point i'll clean the boat up real nice i have a, a few touch-up spots to do on the interior of the canoe where the repairs occurred the cold cracks occurred um, i have to sand that down make it a little more flush and uh, just just touch it with a with a, a fading technique i'm going to try with with some gray i couldn't quite color match this gray on the interior um, you could see that I've tried to do a fade color match here. That's the closest I could come and uh, I'm just gonna try and fade that a little bit more just and then uh, wet sand that in There will be a shadow cast under the deck naturally Under the deck, so I'm gonna be able to uh, blend blend these two color tones a little bit better. I hope Ultimately, it's not a big deal 
but I just want to try and make it look as, as good as possible. So here we go. I'm, go. I'm about to trace this out, cut it out, run it through the router, give it a good sand, find the proper location, the center line for this carrying yoke, screw it into place, and then I'll move into creating the spacers for the seats. I'm going to be lowering the seats. Uh, my experience in solo canoeing is lower is better, not too low. Then you can't get your feet under the seat, but uh, definitely lower than what uh, how the canoe arrived to me in, in its condition. So I'm going to lower it just a little bit just to increase the stability when I'm solo paddling this canoe. So yeah, it's coming along. A little dusty right now, but we'll get it all cleaned up. Really happy so far. It's been a really fun project, really fun, rewarding project. Um, it's the first Royal X canoe I've ever worked on. So my my history with uh, recently with canoes is uh, I, the Wabnaki Cedar Strip canoe build. I have a series, a video series on that, and then I have a Chestnut Chum restoration, which I didn't really cover that because it was over a long period of time. Um, however, after this Mad River canoe restoration, I'm going to be getting into another canoe restoration for somebody that requested some help with that. So I'll I'll uh, I'll cover that in in video format as well. So uh, touch on some of the things that I didn't touch on with the Chestnut Chum. I'm not sure the brand of this canoe that I'm going to be working on next, but I'm looking forward to it, and it's a nice little winter project. thickness of the carrying yoke um, it's just a little shy it's about 15 16 thick I'm gonna take it down to three quarter inches uh, save some weight it's just too thick right now so I'm gonna run it through the thickness planer a couple times take off take off just enough to bring it down to three quarters of an inch maybe just shy of that So I'll be reutilizing the carriage bolts that were uh, part of the old installation for the old seats. I'm going to upsize the drill bit by one size to a quarter an inch and then drill down through the old seat hole locations into the new gunnels, into the new in wheel. And then once that, once I have all four holes, this is the stern seat. Once all four holes are drilled, then I'll go into making my final determination for the spacer height. Um, the seat spaces and then uh, I'll do the same for the bow.
the Waco Danish oil that was used in previous applications is not going to be enough uh, to preserve the wood on the canoe for the life of the canoe. Um, this is an interior product and it, although it can still be used, it, this is a wipe on product and wipe off and then the oil is absorbed deeply into the wood and then, and then it actually hardens the wood a little bit. But it's still not enough to deal with the elements outside. So um, I've decided to use another Rust-Oleum product. This is their spar varnish and this is going to be applied directly over all of the bare wood surfaces that were treated with the Danish Watco oil. Well, the Mad River Canoe Project is complete. The restoration is complete. I have four parts on this. This is the fourth part. Uh, parts one, two, and three can also be viewed on YouTube. And certainly if you like this project, then please uh, consider liking and subscribing. And uh, because I, this is my next project here. This is a custom wood canvas canoe. Um, I'm assisting a couple that had this canoe built by a gentleman in Ontario. And it's reached the point where it just needs some love. And uh, I'm gonna provide that for this canoe, um, basically just uh, in the process of looking it over and determining what materials will be required. I, I have a, a general idea just by looking at it, but I'll know more when the cover comes off. So thanks to all of you for following along with the Mad River Canoe Project. Uh, if you know anyone else that uh, likes this content as well, then please consider uh, sharing that with them. And, and if you're watching this video for the first time, and you liked what you saw, then please consider liking the video and subscribing. It means a lot. And, and leave a comment. I, I really enjoy the comments. I respond to all of them. And uh, it makes it all worthwhile uh, when you're doing these videos in the first place, interacting with the community out there. Uh, it makes it a lot of fun. So thanks for following along. I really appreciate it. And stay tuned for the custom wood canvas canoe restoration project that's coming, coming up shortly. Have a great day.